In this video, we're going to talk about Venco Ventures, trading under the ticker symbol BBIG. At the moment, there are massive volatilities coming out of the stock market, and it's very important to stay up to date with the latest price movements. In today's video, I will be covering the technical aspects and how the stock performed over the recent trading sessions in order to identify what should be the overall approach with the stock. Before the video begins, a quick heads up that my videos are based on the trading sessions already completed, and not all the videos are recorded on the same day they're posted. If material events occur, I will make follow-up videos to reflect those changes. With that being said, let's begin with today's topic. Vinco operates in the consumer products and digital marketing sectors. Its most important asset is a social media platform for video streaming in the Indian market. It's one of the most popular platforms, which is expected to fill in the local demand in one of the largest markets in the world. It's both having a good narrative because of the video platform and because it's in the middle of a short squeeze between those who want to push it lower and those who want to squeeze out the short sellers. The company was founded in 2017 and is based in Pennsylvania. During the trading session on Wednesday, the stock price of BBIG has been retracing back to a relative low of $3.50 and bounced back from there to reach $3.60. The overall impression that I have after a few weeks of recovery is that the stock price of BBIG is now once again under both the selling pressure of those shorting the stock and those looking to reduce their exposures as soon as the stock goes up. It's interesting to see that over the course of one month, the $3 has proven to be a floor for the Venco Ventures stock, which is promising because there is now a clear support at around $3 and if the market continues to hold the stock above $3.50, then it is a sign that the market will eventually go up. Since the beginning of the year, the stock price of Vinco Ventures initially went up to a peak of $5.20, before going back to around $3. The stock initially tried to go even below there, but it bounced back very quickly from there afterwards. Looking at the stock's price action over the past three months, the tendency seems to be bullish, and over a longer period of time, we can see that the volatility of the stock has been a lot greater in the past, and from there, I believe that its retracement in 2021 provided a good opportunity to get in the stock. The trading volume of Vinco Ventures has recently been 47 million shares to an average volume of 42 million shares. Over the previous 52-week period, its price fluctuated between $1.95 and $12.49. The market cap of Venco Ventures is currently at $490 million versus an enterprise value of $362 million. The difference between the market cap and the enterprise value is the premium or discount the financial market is willing to allocate to the company based on its current fundamentals, leverage, and asset composition. Some of the examples of impact by leverage is if the company has a lot of debt, then the market may feel uncertain about the company's capacity to pay back its obligations, which then negatively impacts the profitability, attractiveness, and even solvency of the company. The key element to note regarding the enterprise value is that for many growth type companies, one of the most significant assets they own is the goodwill. Goodwill is basically the expectation of the market that this company can generate more profit or grow at a faster pace than other ones, partially because they may believe that it has a better management team, stronger brand recognition, bigger online following, and so on. It is basically what is unique about this company in particular compared to alternative competitors. In other words, it's not a tangible asset that companies can use but it's often the reason why some companies are perceived to be trading at a discount because the market cap is lower than the enterprise value. If the company goes to liquidation though, Goodwill will be completely gone and we're going to be left distributing the assets without the Goodwill, which is potentially less than whatever that is on the balance sheet at the moment. In comparison to its historical price fluctuations, the stock is 35% higher than the one month low 35% higher than the 3-month low, and 71% higher than the 52-week low. On the options market, which often gives a hint on the market sentiment on where the stock price is likely going to head toward, the implied volatility is 135%, 135% 135 
compared to a historical volatility of 172%. The put call volume ratio is currently at 0.13. It's normal for most stocks to have a higher put volume than what they truly deserve because many institutional buyers choose to hedge their exposures by buying put options. The most recent volume of options traded is 164,000 contracts versus the 30-day average volume of 177,000. In terms of open interest, the most recent volume has been 987,000 contracts versus the 30-day average of 908,000 contracts. Regarding the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own about 13% of the outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders include Vanguard, Bluefin, and Nomura. It's relevant to an extent to understand the shareholder structure because it helps to determine whether you should be holding the stock in the long term or to view it as a short-term volatility trade. If the stock is mainly held by retail traders, it can be a sign that the stock lacks the depth to justify long-term trust from shareholders. Usually the consensus is that there's got to be at least 25-30% to 30% of institutional participation for the stock to be perceived as a good investment and not just a short-term trade. This is obviously subject to a lot of exceptions since many titles are mostly held by retail investors and not institutional ones. But this is the exception and not the rule at the moment. Let's also take a look at the short interest present in the stock, which is the amount of positions aiming to profit if the share price goes lower. Sometimes when there are significant short interest in the total volume, it can be a sign that there's an organized shorting operation going on, like what has been going on with AMC and GameStop. The current short interest is 31% of the total float and 51% of dark pool transactions. Now let's also take a look at the indicators. For the oscillators, they are showing 0 sell, 9 neutral and 2 buy, with an overall tendency of buy. The moving averages of the past price actions show 4 sell, 1 neutral and 10 buy, with an overall tendency of buy. Now keep in mind that indicators show the present and the past, but rarely predicts accurately the future. Nevertheless, they are relevant to determine if the timing of the trade is the right one. In terms of pivot points, which are levels of support and resistance sprinkled in the price trends, the support levels are $2.37, $2.68, and $2.98. The resistance levels are $5.13, $5.70, and $8.30. My opinion on Venko Ventures is now bullish, but we have to face the fact that there may not be enough steam in the short term to push the stock upward. There is enough demand though to maintain the support around $3 for the moment, and this means that they are able to resist to a lot of selling pressure, which is always a good sign by the way, for a short squeeze stock. I would suggest to start building a position within Venko Ventures at the current level, because keep in mind that the price may fall off by an additional 30%. I would recommend a maximum exposure of 1-3% to of your portfolio. And I would also recommend to get in now with at least 20-40% to of your allocated amount, leaving the rest for other pullbacks. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions and the surrounding sentiment to determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't necessarily mean that companies are hiring people, that salaries and living standards are rising. Sometimes it's the exact opposite that happens. Because the stock market is a pool of money where things come in and come out, going to different sectors to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money has been used for non-productive purposes like merger and acquisitions, fees to financial sectors, buying back equity and so on, the less there is for the real economy. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones has increased significantly. But 
people don't necessarily see this growth in tangible ways. This is why we got to be careful with the assumptions that rising stock price means better outlook for the company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive to be bought and that their yields is going down as a result. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, such as the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession or at least pullback. Bubbles have always been created on and off over the past few centuries, but nowadays, it's quite interesting to see the speed at which an organic bubble can be created back in 2020. Because almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in early 2020, the market decided to pour a massive amount of capital in the EV sector and anything that's related to it. Stock prices went up the sky and for a moment, it really felt like any EV stock can be a golden goose. Another way to say this is that any SPAC with an EV company in it will become the next Tesla, right? Even if it didn't last that long, this episode definitely allowed the market participants to park a lot of their money in a sector, leaving it with either a lot of profits or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in the blue chips or the sectors heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months, especially in the scenarios of a short squeeze. Companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions, which will then also trigger an even bigger increase of stock price as a result. Of course, I'm not saying that this is always rational. I'm not even saying that those companies always have a convincing narrative. So for example, if you play video games, ask yourself if you personally bought all your games at GameStop, knowing that you can buy the same games just online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price nowadays for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high or gets higher, it'll create more opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people have been expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. There were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because their debt structure is no longer sustainable or that their business model is bad. But overall, the system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because capital around the world often choose to come to the American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that capital can provide a steady return without being affected too much by the central bank policies and inflations, I think that this phenomenon will increase its pace as time passes by, at least for the next couple of years. This is why we will likely see the blue chips continuing their ascension, even if the growth stocks, even if for the growth stocks, things may be a lot more nuanced. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain quite low because the real economy cannot be improved with just money. As far as we're concerned, this means that the patience would be a great virtue for all of us and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, always make sure to keep your positions diversified and keep the risk level under check. Speculative positions should play a small part in your overall portfolio. I would say it's better to keep them below 10 to 20% of your total holdings. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.